Welcome to today's webcast in which we're going to look at Tableau's roadmap. Just to get started, my name is uh, Matt Harrison. I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant at Thoroughgood. I'm based in the U.S. in our Philadelphia office. I'm a member of our U.S. management team, and I also, uh, in a large part, run our Tableau practice. Uh, full disclosure, uh, Tableau did release their latest version, 2018.3, yesterday. And so I had a grand plan to do a demonstration on a different part of the product suite. But I kind of switched gears a bit. Uh, I'm going to go and talk about some of the things that were released in the latest version as of yesterday. Items that have been in beta for a bit, so they aren't too much of a surprise, but, but they are now generally available. Um, so I uh, switched gears a bit. Um, it'll be new for uh, a lot of us, I'm sure, um, especially if you're not part of the beta program. So uh, just a bit more around today's agenda. I'm going to do a bit of background on Thoroughgood, hopefully quick, uh, and then a bit of background on Tableau as well, uh, just covering the different products in the product suite. And that's something that we do all the time. And I like, I like the slide because, in the very least, it's expanded over time um, with some new products coming out really in the last two releases and, and another product or another guess, aspect of a product that we expect to be released uh, sometime soon, so I think in early 2019. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a bit about Tableau Prep, uh, which is the latest product that has been released by Tableau uh, and an important aspect of their, of their roadmap, and we'll see that more. And then I'm going to do an overview of the latest releases. I'll touch on the one that was released yesterday with a bit of a demo, um, and then We'll do uh, a bit more around coming soon, focusing on what, what was talked about in the conference. So uh, for those of you who don't know Thoroughgood, we are an independent professional services firm, and we specialize in business intelligence and analytics, and so that, that's our full focus. And we've been around for just over now 30 years, um, and, uh, and we've, for the all of our uh, existence have been doing business intelligence analytics, and as you can imagine, it's evolved quite a bit over the years. Uh, we are a global firm. We operate globally, um, staff projects globally. Uh, we have offices in London, which is our global headquarters where we were founded, in New York, Philadelphia, in the U.S., and then offices in Singapore, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Bangalore, India. And all of our consultants throughout all of those offices are recruited and trained in the same way. Uh, and we focus on key competencies around analytics, technology, and business focus so that we can properly bring together and marry all of those concepts to deliver robust solutions. Uh, and then in terms of the services we provide, it's really the full range of BI and analytics services, as you can see on the slide. So anything from strategy and roadmaps, application design development, planning and business modeling with tools like Anaplan, uh, data and analytics services with tools like R or R server and the Microsoft stack or R integrated with Tableau, uh, as well as uh, engagements like training and adoption and maintenance and support. Uh, in terms of the customers we work with, so they typically span four verticals that you see listed here. And I think the thing that, that's in common across all of them is that they're all very um, robust and data-rich verticals. And within each of them, there are uh, departments or uh, cross-sections that are all very relevant to the work that we do, whether it be HR or finance or sales, analytics, and really anything across the board. We're involved in all of it kind of within a firm. And then in terms of technologies that we work with, so we are independent, meaning that we don't uh, work with any one specific technology. Rather, we partner with uh, technologies across the marketplace, Tableau being one of them, what we're going to cover today. Um, but you can see here that we, we do uh, partner with a wide breadth of technologies. And for a tool like Tableau, it's particularly relevant in that we focus uh, not only on Tableau as a, as a solution, but also all of, the all of the platforms that work with Tableau. And for those of you guys who are familiar with the tool, you know that Tableau needs to connect to an underlying data source for it to uh, you know, truly offer that power to the organization. So whether that be a data source like AWS or Azure in the cloud or something more traditional like SQL Server on-prem, we partner with all those technologies as well uh, so that we really have an understanding of what the end-to-end -end, uh, 
nature and, and approach should be for a solution that uses Tableau. And so then a bit more to our partnership. We've been working with Tableau since 2012, uh, which uh, is about how long I've been working with the tool, which is quite a while, uh, especially since they, you know, they came out with server around that time too, really introducing Tableau to the enterprise. Um, and since then, uh, we've, we've grown with the organization. We have uh, 85 plus consultants with Tableau development and delivery experience. Uh, so uh, well over half uh, of the global pool of consultants. Uh, and we also have experience integrating it with um, the different technologies that we work with. Uh, and as you can see here, I've listed a number. So AWS, R, Google Analytics, Salesforce, et cetera, um, all, all tools that we work with regularly and integrate with Tableau regularly. So. By what, that was a bit around thorough introduction, our partnership with Tableau. Now I'm going to get into Tableau Prep and first touch on the different uh, Tableau products within, its, within the product suite. The Tableau product suite slide, I alluded to the fact that this has expanded over time and some, a slide that I've very much liked to see grow and expand kind of left to right really of how it's expanded. So first, the main offering, Tableau Desktop, and that's the developer tool. Uh, sits on an individual's desktop, aptly named, uh, and that allows for the uh, really agile development within the developer's tool to rapidly explore and analyze data and deliver it in a way that really no other tool on the market can really do. This is a tool that you use to connect to a variety of data sources, bring those data sources together via things like data blending, and then do all the visual analytics that you'll see if you, you, know, if you look up anything about the tool. Tableau Server is how those analytics are shared. So you can publish workbooks or visualizations or data sources to Tableau Server and share them across the enterprise. You can also do some development on Tableau Server, and that's, that's with uh, an aspect that they call web editing. It lets them do quite a bit of, um, expand quite a, quite a bit on the product offering in terms of what you can deliver. The next one is Tableau Online. That's effectively Tableau Server, but offered as software as a service and, and maintained, hosted by Tableau in the cloud. And then lastly, there's Tableau Prep, uh, which was formerly referred to as Project Maestro. Um, and that's the essentially the data cultivation, curation, and um, automation tool that Tableau recently uh, released earlier this year. Uh, and that's essentially expanding Tableau as a product suite upstream into the automation uh, aspect of things. And it's, it's incredibly powerful, and I'm going to get onto it uh, right now so we can explore a bit more. So Tableau Prep, um, as it's called now, was released in 2018.2, um, so or uh, 2018.1 or .2, so a bit earlier in the year. Now we're on 2018.3, and for those of you who aren't keyed into the release cadence now. Their Tableau is now doing the quarterly release cadence. Uh, so 2018.1 was released in April, which had prep. 2018.2 was released in July. And then 2018.3 was just released yesterday, as I mentioned. Um, and so it's each quarter. And then um, my feel of, of it is that we're going to get our next release is 2019.1, which will uh, be sometime in the first quarter of 2019. And so in terms of Tableau Prep, what it offers as an overview, it's um, in short a new dedicated tool for uh, visual data preparation and cleansing. So the image that we see on the left-hand side essentially is a workflow that you create in Tableau Prep that lets you bring together disparate sources, whether it be from a database like SQL Server or from Excel, from CVS, uh, from CSVs, excuse me, or now in a re recent, recent release, they let you also bring in statistical files as well as uh, other data sources like Snowflake, if you're using that in your organization. You can bring them all in. You can do filtering, unioning, joining. Um, you can check on the data at each stage to do some data profiling, uh, all different steps throughout. Uh, it's integrated with Tableau, and what that means is that essentially you can pump the results directly into Tableau via an extract, either in the form of a Tableau data extract or in Hyper. And as releases come out, they're going, they're going to move towards Hyper in the long run. Uh, or you can pump it into flat file exports, 
or other type of exports as well. Uh, you can, as I mentioned, cleanse, visualize, and transform the data. And then you have uh, built-in advanced algorithms for data profiling, as I mentioned. Uh, and then lastly, hyper extracts. For those of you who aren't familiar with hyper, I would look it up. I'm not covering it here. We covered it in our last Tableau webcast. If you have any questions about it, I'm happy to dive into it. Um, just don't quite have all the time to cover everything. So that's a bit on Tableau prep. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is um, jump ahead a bit and talk a bit more about the recent, uh, the latest releases that we are going, that we, that came out from Tableau, kind of summarizing the year to date before we get into a bit of a demo with hopefully our last 10 or so minutes. So, latest releases. Uh, so, 2018.1, as I mentioned, so this was released in April time. And as you can see now, if you guys have been familiar with the previous releases where it was, you know, 9.2, 10.1, 10.5, we're now into a quarterly release. So, it's going to be year.x that corresponds with the quarter. So, this was the Q1 release that was released in April. And they, uh, as you'll see throughout all these slides, we had releases that were uh, really across the board. Um, and there are some great resources uh, for those of you guys who are interested in keeping up on this, don't, perhaps don't have the time to join all of our webcasts. Uh, there are some great resources online uh, that you can, uh, to a certain extent, subscribe to, but really get information on uh, when you want to, and I cover that at the end in terms of different websites, but they really cover things uh, across the board. And so for us, what I've done is I've kind of grouped things, at least for 2018.2, into three different buckets. And those buckets, in my mind, are kind of the, the main areas in which they're, they're pushing major progressions uh, or major leaps within the product suite. So the three are enterprise, visual analytics, and mobile. You'll see on the next slide, they're kind of three different buckets, and I suspect that that will continue to change as Tableau makes incremental improvements across the product suite. So, with Enterprise, uh, the major update, there's kind of three main updates. The one I wanted to highlight was end-to-end -end web authoring in green, and that was effectively letting uh, individuals do essentially 90, 95%, even higher of what you can do in Tableau Desktop on Tableau Server. Uh, with that, Tableau did change their licensing in terms of how they let people do web authoring on Tableau Server. However, what it does mean is that you can do all of this web editing in the browser. People don't need software installed on their machine other than a web browser like Google Chrome, and they really have a nearly full parity with the desktop tool. It's pretty powerful. In terms of visual analytics, the big one is Viz and Tooltips, uh, improvements in that area. And so, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, I'm going to cover it briefly in the demo, so I'll, I'll skip over that now, we'll come back to it. In terms of mobile, um, updates to being able to annotate and share, which is a big deal, especially on the run, you have your iPad, you see something in Tableau, you wanna take a snapshot of it, you wanna highlight it, you wanna send an email, that's all integrated in the app, uh, and that was integrated in the app in 2018.1, and now, as a little primer, in beta, they're completely rewriting the app. So it's gonna be, I think it's fully ground up as what I've seen so far. They're including things like this annotation, annotating and share, but they're really taking a look at what they're doing from a mobile perspective. Uh, clearly customers are looking at it and they're telling them that they're looking at it, we're seeing it. So people who are looking at uh, mobile, especially if you're considering mobile as part of your roadmap, definitely look at what Tableau has to offer from a mobile standpoint. We're not covering it in detail here, but if you have questions, obviously reach out, and we do have uh, other webcasts that do cover it. So 2018.2, the three categories that I pulled out were enterprise again, visual analytics again, and then collaboration and extension. So a bit different than mobile, although there is a mobile piece as part of it. Um, and, I, and the reason why I put it in there is I, I feel that it tends more towards collaboration and extension. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. So. Enterprise, Tableau Services Manager. That is an admin portal, fully dedicated, that lets, the, lets your admins manage the Tableau server, effectively remotely, um, managing different things, so you don't have to be on the console or necessarily be on, logged into Tableau server. So it's a kind of a dedicated admin management portal. 
uh, very powerful, allowing people to do quite a bit of, of Tableau server management in ways that they weren't able to do before. In terms of visual analytics, we'll always see updates here. In this case, we saw nested sorting, which lets you sort on multiple dimensions, something that people have been asking for for years, really, and then transparent filters and parameters. A minor change, but it lets people be a lot more robust with how they present information uh, in an aesthetic way. So if you have images that you want to present things, if you want to have background images, company branding, that sort of thing, all of that becomes a lot easier. Collaborations and extensions. Uh, Tableau Extension Gallery. Uh, a lot to cover here. I'm going to park it and come back to it in the demo briefly. In, um, in very short, what we can now do is integrate a host of different applications into our Tableau dashboards, things like uh, things like Slack, things like natural language processing from companies like Automated Insights, built-in custom APIs and applications with that, ERP system applications, all of that you can build into your dashboards, directly in your dashboards. Tableau's had APIs for a long time that lets you embed Tableau in other tools, and this extensions and embedded analytics within Tableau is kind of Tableau flipping the script and going the other direction. They're, they're still letting you embed elsewhere, but they're also making it available for people to embed applications within Tableau. It's a huge step for them, um, I, and they're pushing it. Uh, they think it's going to be the next big thing. Uh, extensibility and its extensions here and, and interoperability of different tools is something that has been uh, in Gartner's crosshairs for a very long time, and this is, this is Tableau's big step towards it. So what does it mean for you guys? If you guys have different tools, uh, different, different reporting tools or different platforms that, you, that people are inputting data into, um, consider those in your roadmap as to how you would expect people to be leveraging Tableau um, because, because you can do it now with these versions. You can, you can integrate these applications into one screen and in ways that are much easier than, than prior. And then the last one in terms of mobile, this was more along the lines of collaboration as well as extension, automatic mobile layout. So previously you could introduce a mobile layout, but you had to um, kind of tweak it, update it a bit to make it fit the framework. Now with automatic mobile layouts, effectively Tableau is getting smarter to let you create these mobile layouts, release them to the app, collaborate with others, via those annotations that I mentioned previously, um, all of that. And then lastly, 2018.3, as I said, released yesterday, mostly, and the reason why I say mostly is because the Tableau prep release actually came out a bit earlier in October, which goes to show that they will release, they will, they will be releasing product enhancements, I would say, uh, at different points, but, but likely around the same time, but not necessarily around the same time. So, as I mentioned, these updates here, visual analytics updates, uh, came out yesterday. I'm going to cover these in the seven, five or so minutes we have left, left as a quick demo. And then in terms of automation, these guys came out earlier October. I think it was October 8th or so. Uh, and so uh, it just goes to show that they're going to ship these things when they're ready. Um, and again, there are a lot of great resources we can cover. Tableau desktop demo. Let's cover this. Uh, quickly, uh, and then I'll want to talk a bit around resources, both from us as well as some resources on Tableau that they can offer. So, the, the couple things that I wanted to show were heat maps and set actions. And I'm, of course, tight on time because I talk a lot, so I'm going to cover this briefly. If you guys have questions, of course, please don't hesitate to reach out. Happy to expand on any of this uh, in more detail. So, heat map. It's pretty simple. Uh, again, just released yesterday. I have a normal map here, and this is a map that goes down to count, county. So for those of you who aren't familiar with mapping, uh, bringing on these geographic-based fields as, uh, as county, and then we um, plotting, in this case, uh, adult obesity. So just some random data. And the reason why I thought this was good with the heat map is that if you look at this data, it's essentially we have an obesity rate here that uh, has us from 11 to, cut off on my screen, I think it's like upwards of 40 or 50%. Let me move that over here. Yeah, 47. 
Um, and so you can see, okay, with this map, where are my clusters? There's a cluster down here of where it seems like across the country people might be more obese. There's a cluster here. Your eyes are definitely drawn up here. Maybe a cluster here, maybe a cluster here. So what does the heat map let you do? Effectively lets you find those clusters easier. The way you do it is that you essentially, it's a new mark type. It's called density. And it's pretty much just as simple as clicking to it and it just changes. I had it set up in a different heat map over here. I'll click over, it's the same thing. So why is that significant? Well, if I go back, and again, I just clicked on it, and that's easy, new mark type, pretty powerful. Well, I thought that maybe the biggest cluster was down here. However, the density of all these different counties brought together tells me that this is darker, this is darker. So if I'm considering where is the density of my obesity, it isn't necessarily where I thought it was. So um, not to say that the map we have here isn't valuable, it is. But the point that they're making with the introduction of density is that it really shows something different. And I think the thing that goes to show this even more is that if we have a combined map here, so I've, I've brought the two concepts together. So I have one mark that's showing the filled rates here, and then I have little dots that are showing this density here. Uh, and at the moment, they are sized as small as possible to hopefully be out of the way a bit. So again, if I size them as small as possible, I, in my opinion, the, the area that still pops out to you is this area down here. So Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. If I expand this out to here, increase the size, and overlay the density, clearly that's not the darkest area. Same values, uh, I'm just showing the mark in a, in a bit of a different way in which Tableau is clustering and bringing out the density of those items. Wildly powerful um, and, again, very easy to introduce. It was really just one click from your normal maps before. So clicking on here, and there it is, density. Okay. Uh, the next one in terms, uh, in terms of what I want to show is set actions. So I'm going to show this briefly. Um, a bit more developer-oriented, uh, I'll stay, so I'll apologize if you guys aren't familiar with actions up front. Shoot me a note. I can jump into it with you guys in a lot more detail. Essentially, what they've added is two more actions here that I wanted to briefly touch on. I'm going to touch on it just here and show you how they work in action. I'm not going to redevelop it for you. There's a lot of resources online as to how these work, as well as I'm happy to jump into it offline if you guys are interested. Two new actions. One, go to sheet. Two, change set actions. The set action one is a bit immature in my opinion, although there, it can be expanded upon quite a bit. What it lets you do very easily now is have what they call proportional brushing, which I have shown over here that you could do it prior, showing that over here, but this is new with the set action. It essentially takes this visualization, which as you can see are more or less the same that, that requires several different approaches to get to. It takes more or less one click now to do set actions and proportional brushing. So for people who are familiar with tools like Power BI, where this is kind of out of the box, now it's much more out of the box with Tableau as well. And so what I'm doing here is I'm selecting a number of states and it's filling in the amount out of the total that, that our sales apply to for this, pack, for this uh, type of consumer versus corporate versus home office. If I wanted to do a larger region, I could do that too, and it'll be a higher proportion. The other one, as I mentioned, was uh, go to sheet. This is also something that's possible. Let me just pull it up again briefly. Also something that's possible here, um, was possible prior, but now it's again just a one click. I have it set up over here. If I click on that, it's gonna take me to another sheet. Simple one click. You don't have to set up things behind the scenes for people now, very out of the box. And so they're making things out of the box. It's very easy to do uh, with this recent release. They're making everything easier and therefore more palatable for uh, anyone really who's familiar with the tool. Very brief introductions there. Let's jump back to the slides and wrap up. Okay, so a bit around coming soon. Very quick, two major things coming soon, and I urge you to go to tableau.com slash coming soon. I'll show the website in a moment, um, but these are the two big ones. Ask data, natural language processing, 
natural language processing has been around for a while uh, and around much longer with other tools, some tools in Microsoft, Cortana, et cetera. Uh, this is in beta now. It's pretty good as a, as a beta release, so I, I can't wait to see what happens. Essentially, you're going to be able to ask questions of published data sources. Uh, it's going to do things like aggregating, sorting, and filtering for you. It could be very powerful, especially for people who don't want to write queries or don't want to even drag and drop in Tableau. The next one, Tableau Prep Conductor, which is essentially the server version of Tableau Prep. It's going to let you schedule and automate jobs. So for people who schedule and automate jobs in things, you know, any tool, things like Alteryx, things like uh, SQL Server, AWS, Azure with, you know, Data Factory, anything like that, Tableau Prep Conductor is going to let you do that with Tableau Prep. We knew it was coming. It was the logical next step, and we're, I'm glad to see it on the list. And then lastly, um, with the perhaps extra minute that I might have with you guys, um, a bit around coming soon. So uh, Tableau, as we know, had their conference last week, uh, and they do do devs on stage. There is a great highlight video. That's this YouTube link here. So I would urge you guys, take a screenshot of what I have on screen here. There's a blog post a YouTube channel, uh, a YouTube video, I should say, excuse me, as well as the tableau.com product slash coming soon. I've highlighted a couple, but the one I'll leave you guys with um, before I wrap up with our concluding slide here is um, export to PowerPoint. I'm not personally a big fan of people exporting visualizations into PowerPoint, although I recognize that it's still a big part of our of company culture, putting things into PowerPoint, especially at the C level. This is, and you can watch it on, um, on the YouTube video as well as in the blog post, uh, and it's also uh, going to be released into beta soon, if not already, um, around exporting to PowerPoint. Uh, you can, in, with one click from desktop, and I believe Tableau server, uh, if not now, coming soon, you can export to a visualization to PowerPoint so that uh, people can automatically have it into PowerPoint, so it's not PDF. You don't have to take a screenshot. It's all the way there, um, and you'll have you know some ability to customize it as well. And at the conference, people, some people loved it, some people hated it, um, and I think it'll continue to evolve and offer a lot of value. Thank you for letting me talk at you very quickly for a little bit over 30 minutes. Um, I just will wrap up by putting up my contact information again here say a quick thanks, and um, if you guys do have questions around different releases, don't hesitate to ask. You'll, on our website, you'll also see that there are um, a lot of different approaches we take with Tableau around iterative uh, design and implementation, Tableau governance, user empowerment with Tableau, all aspects that could be valuable to your organization. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out around any technical questions or anything in terms of services we can offer, I hope my excitement for the roadmap has come across in this, uh, and I also hope you guys have a great rest of the day. So thank you guys so much, and thank you for the time.